Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons here on ukuleleunderground.com. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I'm joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice now commercial. What's up, Aaron? What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend, Fergins. What's up, Kahai? <laughs> you said Fergins. Fer- uh, Fergins? Fer- <laughs> like, multiple, <Jurgens. laughs> like multiple. Like multiple. Like multiple. Kahai Fergins. Fergins. <laughs> I like that name. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? Hey, everyone's here. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're here today. All three of us are here. And uh, we're going to be doing Thursday Live Lessons. Now, what is Thursday Live Lessons? It's, uh, it's a place where we answer any and all of your questions. We get a bunch of questions, um, you know, via email, via the website, via U+, uh, and, you know, what whatever. Like, your, your auntie told my mom to ask you to ask me a question, and now I'm answering it on the uh, on the stream, right, Kahai? <laughs> yeah, that happens on that. Yeah, your, your auntie had a question, you know, asked your mom, and then your mom told you, and then you're telling, you're asking me. So it's however we get these questions. We're answer them as best as we can. Yeah. Kai was fixing the thing. I was about to ask him, "Do you have any questions?" And I don't want to. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions, Kai? Uh, no, we're, we're kind of light on questions this week, so we don't. Okay, really cool. Well, we are well, actually. Yep. Um, you, we were kind of talking about something yesterday. Kahai and I were talking about something yesterday. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we want to say the person's name, but no, we, we can talk about like a general yeah, what the question was about. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I have no idea what, what this is, but this is... I also, I also got a question um, through... Uh, uh, somebody pressed the green button and messaged me directly. Oh, nice. So okay, we can, okay, we can talk about that too, but cool. I don't know if... Yeah. yeah, I was going to say that we're live and we have a live chat. So if you guys have any questions throughout the show, you can ask them uh, right there. and We'll try to answer them as best as we can. But I guess we, you know, we have questions and stuff. We can uh, make a discussion about what you guys were talking about yesterday. So can, can I can I be cool too? Can <laughs> yeah, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I feel... <laughs> can I add my two cents? Part of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what were you talking about? Tell, give me give me a little give me a little sample. Uh, um, so you Kai... don't have to say who it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Kai was saying that somebody. Um, kind of was he was messaging back and forth with somebody who yep. had a question okay. about um i guess they they started off with kind of like an entry level kala the or uh, i don't know what level kala but they had a yeah. kala and mm-hmm. then they came to Kauai and they bought a kanilea yeah and then when they or they've been using it for a few months and they only now realize like that the kanilea has a wider neck yes and so it to them, it feels like it's giving them a harder time playing certain chords, mm. especially and like bar, bar chords, chords. I yeah. guess. Mm. Yeah, which makes sense. Which right? makes sense. That, that makes sense because uh, the first time, you know, I played a I played a kanile as opposed to like the kamaka that I've been playing for years and stuff. It was like kind of a small transition. You know, mm-hmm. like it wasn't like I was having a hard time or anything. It's not not to that point. But you do uh, notice the difference. Yeah, right? there's you a gotta kind of reposition or like, yeah. Kind of remember the positioning of your mm-hmm. fingers in, for for each instrument, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's uh, it's not too bad because you know I go from guitar to ukulele all the time. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So mm-hmm. the, it's the the string spacing is is wider, and but like the you know I guess the neck itself is wide, but the string spacing is what really makes a difference. You know, you can have I've seen ukuleles with wide necks and stuff, but like as far as the string spacing, it's not too much of a difference. But Kanilea keeps it like nice and uh, um, consistent with the uh, with the width of the neck and yeah. um, like I said it's a it was an easy transition for me going from you know going from guitar to ukulele all the time but uh, the point is I still notice the difference so you know you're not you know you're not wrong to thinking like oh well it's you know I'm having a hard time like you know a harder time playing a uh, you know the bar chords and all that stuff but so you you know your concerns are legitimate and um, but at the same time, uh, I think a lot of people blame the like, oh my, my hands are too small to, yeah, to, you know, to or the instrument, or the instrument yeah. is too big, or yeah. whatever you know. Like it's uh, I mean, I hate to use like that one that one video with those Korean kids playing like playing guitar and stuff but, like the tiny kids you know like uh oh yeah like, that, like, like babies very, yeah playing a full-size <laughs> guitar, full-size guitar. <laughs> yeah. and like not just a regular acoustic guitar also it's like a, like like a classical, classical guitar, guitar which has a, even a even wider, wider neck. neck exactly yeah you know, you know what I mean like I don't expect yeah. everyone to play like <laughs> like Korean children and stuff yeah like I guess the, it, that would kind of be the same thing if you right. if you know how to play um regular steel string acoustic mm-hmm. guitar and then you switch to a classical guitar mm-hmm. Mm. it has a wider yes. neck and yeah. you have to kind of reposition your fingers differently and, yeah. yeah differently mm-hmm. so um yeah so it is you know you, you do notice a difference and like and even you know experienced guitar players like if you've been playing 
uh, acoustic guitar for a long time and then you you're like at a jam session or something and the only guitar that was available was like a classical guitar yeah you're gonna have a hard time yeah so, so. it's it, with anything i mm-hmm. mean switching f- say from that instrument to the instrument that you play on stage there's True. a su- yeah. subtle yeah. difference too mm-hmm. so it's- so you're you're right and stuff but like uh i would suggest see what you know i, I want to say that what helped me was uh was when I was in college, I always I never had like an acoustic guitar, you know, at my at my apartment. I always had a classical guitar at oh, my okay. apartment. So every time I played guitar, and you could see it in like the older ukulele oversoul like YouTube channel videos, mm-hmm. you know, that I have, um, that I'm using a classical guitar. I never had a uh, um, acoustic guitar there. So okay. whenever I practice, yeah. it was always like the widest neck possible, <laughs> or, what, or you know, mm-hmm. or, or whatever and stuff. And um, so whenever I played ukulele afterwards, it just seemed so comfortable. So my, you know, my suggestion for uh, for for you is to really get you know uh, practice with that kanilea that, that you have now because if you can get it down with that kanilea with that wide neck, every other neck is going to be like super simple. You're gonna find everything simple. It's kind of like. Um, you guys ever use like like weighted like a like a well, I mean you, you run all the time to use like <laughs> like a weighted vest yeah or weighted something. vest to kind of help you and stuff so when you take the vest off like Goku mode you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if yeah. we can use Dragon Ball Z as a reference uh, like you know you a can, rockly exactly <laughs> rock, yeah rock rockly broccoli yeah like Pokemon rockly yeah rockly with his, uh, I like that you know not as a reference I like that, you know a nice clap for Aaron because. <laughs> Aaron says he's yeah. not a weeb, but I know. Yellow, like, he, he went to his tuning exams. You know? yeah. <laughs> he saw the fight between, uh, between Rockley and uh, who was the other person? Yeah. I mean, I it, at least that, that far, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, to the tuning exams. Yeah, yeah. Right. It wasn't Gata? Gata no, like, Gata was. Um, was it Gata? It might he, have been Gata. He beat yeah, him. Gata. Sorry, right. sorry he, to ukulele people who have no idea what we're talking lost, about. Rockley <laughs> lost that that match. But anyway, <laughs> so you know, um, just just to clarify, Rockley, uh, his cartoon character, he had like weights on his legs and stuff, and yeah. the weights were like. Like so he was he was fast already per, with the weights yes. on, and yeah. then when he took it took them off, yeah, he, it was, he was even like blazing fast. So exactly, so you know, kind of exactly like the same. <laughs> kind of the same. Bring it back around. Bring it back to ukulele. To ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were to practice with a wide neck, much like how when I was in college, I practiced all the time with a wide neck um, classical guitar. When I, and then I went to a regular acoustic guitar, and then I went to an electric guitar, which is even easier. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, went to uh, to play ukulele like a lot more. Uh, you know, a lot more regular because I I feel like I played guitar way more than I played uh, ukulele in college. I mm-hmm. feel like, and um, you know, when I finally like um, played ukulele mainly, you know, it, it was it was a lot easier. I had a lot easier time. So it's going to be a tough transition, especially if you're you know if you're used to. Uh, smaller necks and if ukulele is your first instrument so you don't have like a point of reference to a to a wider neck and stuff it's going to be a a, a little bit of a challenge to to kind of overcome but once you get it down it's going to be beneficial like for for the rest of your ukulele life basically you know mm-hmm. like the, when you're uh if you play another ukulele because i i feel that kanile has one of the wider neck widest necks available today you know as far as four stringed ukuleles goes mm-hmm. yeah I, yeah i think it's it's interesting uh i i think some people use the excuse right like mm-hmm. oh of course it would sound that good when you yeah. play it because yeah. you're a professional right <laughs> and it's kind of like yeah they they are a prof- like mm-hmm. they put in the time to play yeah. their instrument and get to know <laughs> their instrument super well yeah so it like it pretty much does make like mm-hmm. the player you know mm-hmm. is most of they can make a good player can make anything sound good. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What so. what would be the benefits of having a wider neck or like what's what's the reason oh, okay. why they so decided great, to go great with question. that? Um, because you know, for for myself, I love the wide necks now, and you know, I I can tell you guys that the difference is my fingers won't have to bunch up you know as as much as it used to. There's mm-hmm. a lot more room. So if I'm doing like really fast, you know, like uh, picking and stuff, I have more room and I can be more accurate yeah. instead of like uh, say I'm doing. If if I do this and I go up, 
and uh, I I can I touch like this A string a little bit. I'm gonna. You know, oh I'm yeah. Gonna so so I guess there's room between the strings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the string spacing is a little yeah. bit wider. That's that's what I'm talking. So yeah. the string spacing is wider. It allows me to be a lot more accurate when I'm doing like single note picking. Mm -hmm. You know, even double note picking and stuff. And sometimes when I when I do double note picking or double string picking, I sometimes hit like my my other strings. But with the wider spacing, it allows me to be more accurate and to really only in on those two strings yeah that i need to yeah. I need to pick or these two strings so if i pick it like this getting those two middle strings without touching the you know without touching the oh, rest yeah. is, a, is is pretty important to me you know like uh, yeah. if i want to be yeah. accurate uh we, yeah. that makes sense we were kind of talking about it too right like in comparison to like a car yeah like, yeah. yeah i mean like yeah so so if say you had like a a Corolla or something right, right. and you you're used to where everything is on your Corolla <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you buy like a Porsche <laughs> or oh, something Porsche, yeah okay. even even like a car mm -hmm. it's saying it's it's also a car yeah, yeah but the layout of it is different. different so I mean if you're stepping up to a Connie Lea yeah, that's kind of that's, that's kind of like a yeah <laughs> yeah and and you're not gonna drive the Porsche everywhere right. like you might not take mm -hmm. it out you true. know, if you're just we're, gonna go to the grocery store, right? <laughs> we're kind of, yeah. we're kind of saying, I would love to take a Porsche to grocery yeah, store. Yeah, but, but I mean, but just sitting yeah. in it and and feeling your way around where all the controls are, where yeah, the yeah. steering wheel is placed, how it feels, it's mm -hmm. gonna be different. There's a transition of people. Yeah, 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 and so you're gonna use one for certain things. Mm -hmm. You you're gonna use the other for other things, yeah. and then um, when you play it or when you're actually in it mm -hmm. using it. It's gonna be slightly different. Yeah, we were, we were talking too about like um, just like, it's probably like the same thing too, right? Where you get into the Porsche and it's like, oh, but my Corolla has such good fuel economy. <laughs> it's like, then yeah, yeah. why'd you buy that's a Porsche? Not, yeah. right? Like that's not really the reason why you buy yeah. a Porsche. Which isn't to say that you shouldn't you shouldn't get Connie Leas. They're great yeah. instruments. Yeah. But if you do get them, just like you can know that. Yeah, that's they're... one of their features. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's like yeah, an the inch wider and a half nut or something. Yeah. You know? Like that's that's one of their features is to have a wider, uh, wider neck so that you can you know you can play those uh th those chords a little bit easier. Like, uh, Aaron has brought in his like small ukulele before, and you know we we tried to play it, so it's exactly like that. It's like you're. Your fingers are kind of bunching up to you know to get those uh, to get those notes like, mm -hmm. a little bit more accurate, right? So you imagine if you kind of widen up that space, you'll get to those notes a little bit easier, a little bit wider. Maybe not. Maybe the word's not easier, but like a little more accurately would be uh, the the best word of choice for me. Yeah, because <laughs> it's not yeah. easy necessarily because you have to like open up a little bit more. Yeah, no. And and I guess you would have to go through the same type of mm -hmm. thing. If you're going from like a soprano to concert to mm -hmm. tenor and just uh, slight adjustments need right. to be made. But if you can kind of get that, like be, yeah. be able to be adaptable, mm -hmm. then you can play anything really. Yeah. So. We, we talked about like in 101 too, we talk about like really nailing mm -hmm. those like fundamental placements mm -hmm. of like your hand and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because it really is like, even if you go smaller or bigger, mm -hmm. you want your, your hands to kind of be in the same like yeah. relative position, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, it, good that you mentioned that because like, it would be the same thing. You would still have a transitional period if you went backwards. Like if you played Kanilea, like your your entire, you know, your entire ukulele career and then you switch to a Kamaka or something. Yeah, or like, like an Ohana. Or, 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 yeah, a, a, yeah, a smaller neck. So you'd be like, okay, mm -hmm. why... You know why is it like so hard to kind of you know get to those notes because you got so used to a wider neck mm -hmm. getting to those notes might be a transition period yeah. once again yeah. maybe harder is not the word it's just you know yeah so so different. yeah so i think at one point um whoever asked the question was saying like is there anything that i can do can i bring it to like a luthier oh, and no, change no, yeah no, absolutely not i mean you would be you'd be gutting the instrument like you'd be shaving this down yeah there. or yeah. like taking the nut out and like adding you know putting an entirely new nut and saddle and that just wouldn't be ideal because if you put a new nut and saddle to fix the um no like the, wouldn't even change say fix, the to change, change this to change the spacing the, uh, string or... spacing it would just be it would have a lot of you know a lot of space on the top and the bottom mm -hmm. and it kind of gets rid of that what what i say was you know was a, a nice consistent string spacing to the uh, you know to the edges of the neck mm -hmm. so the edges will be like super thick 
and then the in you know the inside the four strings would have like smaller string spacing so I just, yeah like, and then to to fix that you would have to reshape the neck if you yeah. wanted if, <laughs> if i may ask how long did it take until they noticed i don't because you said they were playing for a while and then you're like yeah oh so that's so the thing is you know, you were you were fine with you know with, with playing the Kanilea. It wasn't until like afterwards you're like, why is it so why is it so difficult for me to, <laughs> to play chord? But you you were playing it for I'm guessing months at least, right? You know, until uh, until you know the difference. They, so they it's, said they got it last September. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Like, yeah. So yeah. So it's, it's you know it's it's a few months. So it's like the differences are subtle. Like it's so subtle that it doesn't warrant like gutting the entire uh-huh. you know, instrument yeah. to, to kind of to change it. What? I would say you know just. Treat of uh, treat it like uh, like how we said like rock Lee's weights on his legs, you know. What, yeah. what they were saying though is like that they they said like oh I heard that you can uh, change the string height to make it easier to play. Mm. Oh, make like the, the action or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, but that sure, really it'll have... you know it'll uh, it'll make it make <clears throat> playing easier. But that's a completely different you know like a. Uh, 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 if if you're a having different it, part of the ukulele that you're making easier. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. That doesn't yeah. have to do with mm-hmm. that uh, the wide with the width yeah. yeah it's it's like it's width versus height at, at that point so you know you changing the height is not going to change the fact that your hands are going to be you know opening up a little bit wider to get the um, you know to to get to it and the thing is honestly the difference is like in fractions of an inch it's like not that much so like if uh you know if if you're if you're really like having a hard time and stuff, I don't know what I, I think it's it's really just like mental stuff. Yeah, like, you know, you know what I mean. Like if yeah. somebody told you, they're like, "Oh, did you know that this is wider?" And it's, and then you're like, "Huh, oh. maybe that's why my you know like yeah. my hands have been like you know my hands have been having a hard time getting because I I I mean I, I don't want to like you know I don't want to be like it is Kinda like very assume. mental, but yeah. I don't want to assume. But it sounds to me like it's more of a mental thing. Like, you mm-hmm. know, someone like, or he found out, or she, he or she, like, found out that, like, um, that... Or just kind of noticed yeah, that Yeah, kind of noticed, like, you know, that it, it's it's wider. And then they, maybe they looked it they, up, like, oh, it is wider, you know? They went the opposite way, though. What do you mean? Because in the message, they said that they were trying bar chords. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't do it on the Kanilea. And mm-hmm. then when they tried with the Kala, mm-hmm. they noticed that it, they could. Mm-hmm. But then, and then from there, they tried to figure out like why they mm. couldn't, and then that's mm-hmm. when they they kind of found realized out that it was, that it was like wider. A, it so was yeah, because yeah, we're talking fractions of an inch. It's not that big of a difference, but it yeah. is a noticeable difference. So if you know, um, yeah. So so it, I think it's fair to say that when whenever you're kind of switching from mm. an instrument that you've been There's playing a for a while yeah. yeah to a new instrument yeah. any new instrument mm-hmm. is gonna be yeah, yeah. there's gonna regardless be regardless tra- if it's expensive or not expensive period you know, like, yeah yeah because you, you can have like a there's some like unexpected uh, inexpensive ukes that have like like fatter necks not necessarily yeah. wide but just like yeah. this way you know yeah. like and and um fatter. I guess the curvature mm-hmm. of the back of the yep. neck has different shapes. There mm-hmm, are different mm-hmm. shapes. There are kind of like D shapes. Mm-hmm. There are like pointy kind of shapes. Yeah, yeah. There's a C shape. Mm-hmm. They're like yeah. so. It's it's all different, and I I like to God. say I be I you know I, I played a part in, in the uh, in, in the neck shape of kind of oh is, uh, yeah yeah is. yeah because the they mm-hmm. were different when yeah. you you kind of like, picked I just them. Kept, the, I kept being picky about like my neck shape and stuff, and I was telling Joel like, yeah hey, can I get it like you know a little bit more like this and this part right here yeah so i like to you know yeah and that, i mean <laughs> it's also like a structural thing mm-hmm. too because it can't be too thin mm-hmm. like you know it has to be able to withstand the tension of the strings yeah. so the width you know um the width of kanilea making it bigger this way mm-hmm. we uh, we compensate a little bit of it by making this you know making the back part a little bit skinnier mm-hmm. so it's not like your you know your hand is here or, let me show it like this so it's not like your uh, your hand is is like right here, and then you know you're trying to do you know do bar chords on on one and stuff. It's uh, because we made it skinnier here. So if you uh, you know you can have a little bit more more uh, fingers or more length going on this side of yeah, the ukulele. Yeah. So like it's compensates. So it's not like the... a super yeah, thick neck. Exactly. So it's you know what what we gave here we took away here. Mm-hmm. So like the feel should. Um, 
or the, at least the transition should be relatively easier to yeah to do yeah. so and and it just um depends on the way that your hands are being placed yeah. and you just kind of have to adjust and mm-hmm. try different things okay so but, it's not a mental thing but a lot of people it's like it's it's a mental thing if you find out like oh it is wider like huh yeah maybe it could it, you be, know for some for yeah. some maybe not in this case yeah. and stuff, but for some people it's like and it is harder <laughs> i think too sometimes that that fact like adds on to mm-hmm. just like you know like saying like well it's not my fault so i i'm not gonna keep trying yeah yeah like yeah. but it kind of is just like you can get over it yeah. and and yeah there yeah. as like, long as you keep trying yeah, yeah. yeah. proof of fact is like that francesca like sent me a message yeah. about like pretty much the same thing like saying that she even though she loved her connie leia yeah. like the neck width was like giving her a hard time mm-hmm. so she she had to sell like she was like i just have to sell it you know mm-hmm. i have to go with like something that's easier for yeah. me to play but she ended up like she couldn't find the seller mm-hmm. or a buyer so she kept trying to play with it and then she found that she's like oh yeah i, I eventually yeah, i, I it's, did it's good now. get over it yeah <laughs> because like once you get used to it once you you know like really get familiarized with the um you know with, with the width and with the change of width you're gonna notice that like it it's actually going to be easier for you to you know to play some chords once you kind of uh, get used to to the feel because you no longer have to like kind of squish your fingers together to, yeah. you know, to get some yeah. chords like for example a like a diminished chord on a uh, on a kamaka would be like this i would have to uh like squish it a little bit yeah more. even if it's just fractions Slightly. of an inch yeah because it's four fingers you know like uh trying to occupy that one tiny space you want a little bit more spacing and you can get harder chords like that um minor seven chords are a little bit easier for me too because you know it's uh it's still like kind of bunching up a bunch and then i can kind of hit different you know different strings this way and get different voicings on my chords so going from that minor seven to a c7 and I don't have to like switch from here to do that for the C7. I just go here to here, and it's thanks to the uh, to the wider string spacing. <laughs> it like yeah. that that also makes sense too, because I, I think mm. Mm, just you know based on how Kala like make the idea of Kala and how they make ukuleles, I'm guessing they try to make like a neck profile and a neck mm. and a ukulele that like. Somebody who's brand new to ukulele will be able to pick up, and then yeah. it, like all their ukuleles, I yeah. think, are really geared towards beginners, mm-hmm. even if they're more expensive. You know, yeah. they have expensive ukuleles. Right. I think it, they're made to where you pick them up, and it's like, oh yeah, this feels pretty good. And, yeah. yeah, for for the most amount of people. Yeah, I yeah. Think. yeah. they're yeah. they're trying to shoot out like a super mm-hmm. wide net, right? Yeah, and right. then where Connie Leia, they're like, oh, we kind of know who we are, yeah. we know what we like. Well, and it's, it's standard. I mean, I think Kala's Kala's width is standard. Like yeah. whatever, like that width is is the same width as like say uh, Kamaka as mm-hmm. um, as Kamoa as like Koaloha and stuff. Uh, Connie Leia is the one that's like kind of. Not slightly standard, different yeah slightly different slightly yeah. bigger and that was a you know conscious decision by joe souza so you know i don't I, I don't mean to sound like you know like a representative of, of kanye Lea, although i am and stuff and like, <laughs> well that's just how we do things and stuff because i get it. and uh the thing is it's it's uh it's the same for any instrument you know like a, an electric guitar for example if you're playing say like a stratocaster versus a Les Paul, you know, like it's <laughs> there's a big difference between yeah. the two, and they're both just guitars, right? Yeah. And um, the Les Paul is like maybe three, four, ten times more expensive than the like uh, you know, than than a Stratocaster, but like you know, it, it's yeah, it's, it's just diff- two different, different things. And that yeah. we're talking neck profiles, you know, we're not even talking just the weight of the guitar, two guitars. We're talking neck profiles that like uh, that. Gibson Les Paul is going to be like super chunky. I don't know. Have you, have you played a, a you play a Les Paul yet? No. Yeah. But it's I mean, I've chunky. held, yeah, I've held one. It's before. chunky as. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jim, uh, Jim had a, had a comment. Didn't no. you, you have a super wide neck model in early April a few years ago? <laughs> super neck what? Super wide neck model. Oh, <laughs> last, last year or the other year. It was a no, couple, a couple years ago. We did, but <laughs> nobody backed up our Kickstarter. So we, we, we couldn't make it, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like it's, so and that, that's that's the risk. One of the risks of the Kickstarter. Kickstarter risk. <laughs> that was that was for all the people who in our video comments would be like, "Oh, it's just too small for my hands. I can't get it. Why is it too small?" But I mean that that's kind of the point is that like you know. I guess different builders do things differently and yeah. say that there are certain benefits for it, but it 
really just comes down to you adapting yeah. yourself to the and, instrument. And it's that instrument's personality. I mean, like, yeah. that's the personality yeah. of Kanye Lays is going to have a wider, you know, like a wider neck. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I like a little bit more junk in the trunk than my, uh, <laughs> my ukulele. Like. I, <laughs> oh, I, I feel like for a lot of instruments, that's kind of the, the thing that happens is that you get an instrument and mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's when you first start dating somebody, you're like, oh, they're great. They're yeah. they're fantastic. You know, I love hanging out with them. <laughs> and you see their and did you get like, to oh, know it. Like, oh, oh, uh, uh, have it's you really like, looked at her? She's a little wide. <laughs> like, oh, oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. It's oh, like, I love her for who she is. Okay? <laughs> but, you know, it's like the less the less pause, like you can get such a like, huge tone, like with the double coils, you know, and it's, like, it's so amazing. But uh, it's a little hard to play sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every, every instrument just has like its little quirks, and yep. mm-hmm. over as you learn more about it, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's perfectly fine too. If you learn uh, instruments' quirks and you decide like oh, I don't really like it, you know, that's yeah, why people yeah. sell their yeah. instruments. Mm-hmm. You know, then, like not everyone has to like kind of is. Like, yeah, and, and and I or for me at least I like I'll learn my instruments' quirks, mm-hmm. and then sometimes it's like. Oh, this instrument is kind of hard to play, mm-hmm. but I like it for that reason. Yeah. yeah, I like that it adds like this toughness to my actual my actual playing. You yeah. Know? Did you uh, did they say if they tried it first before they bought it, or did they just like order it from like oh uh, they like, not knowing they were able to come to Kauai and try it mm. here. Yeah, and so they tried it at like Scotty's, Scotty's. and yeah. then so they got it from there. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you know you should have like it's. They should have felt the difference, like from because it's 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 a noticeable difference. Like I'm gonna keep saying that it's a noticeable difference. So when you play it for the first uh, Kanye for the first time, as opposed to like Kamaka Koloa and Kala and stuff, it's going to you're going to notice that first. That's like the first thing you notice that like the feel, the neck is different, and and the sound, and the sound, yeah, the characteristic of the sound mm-hmm. is different, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, it's got a kind of a not deeper but like a warmer tone. As uh, or darker tone, I should say, I mean, dark, mm-hmm. like a darker mm-hmm. tone, as opposed to like Kamaka with like a little bit brighter. Yeah, and, and Koloha is like super bright. Like, yeah. Here's the light, <laughs> yeah. shining right in your yeah. face. It's like <laughs> it's not, like it's that, not gonna yeah. stop vibrating. <laughs> it yeah, keeps yeah, bright, like, vibrating. And it's it's all in the design of the inside of the uh, of all those ukuleles and stuff. Like that's how that Koloha was built. Is built to like you know for uh, for for brightness. But mm-hmm. you know if if you're playing in a halal, for example, then you need to like uh, cut through, you know, the the ipu or like the, yeah, and all the ulis yeah. or whatever, you know, that, that you have and stuff. It's you're gonna need a bright instrument, so I would go with the uh, with a colo if I'm doing something like that. You know, I wouldn't necessarily be using a kanilea to try to cut through all those, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, all those instruments. Something that mm, people kind of tend to do is they tend to come to Kauai or they come to Hawaii and then they're like, oh, I heard koa ukuleles are the best. Yeah. I got to get a cool ukulele. And then you tell them the price. Or I used to work at a music store and I right. would tell them the price. And they'd be like, why is it so expensive? And it's like, well, it's it's like an endangered tree <laughs> in Hawaii. Yeah. You know, we only have so much to cut down. And yeah. if you want to get real cool, that's like the price. And then like, you know, you show it to them too. Or like mm-hmm. some people are like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. And then you show it to them. And then they, they say like, oh, this doesn't sound as good as I thought it would. Yeah. And what they really mean is like it doesn't sound as bright as I thought it mm-hmm. would, because they're they're thinking like, oh, it's gonna sound like a spruce top or something, yeah. right? Something really bright and mm-hmm. really projects. Mm-hmm. And then when you give them a cool instrument, it's like ah, it's not the natural yeah. characteristic. Yeah. Of- yeah, and it's all it's all different stuff as far as. Um, the core characteristics goes, or the the price range, you know, I should say, like they, I, I think people should just do you know a little bit of research before like going in, uh, and and kind of just demanding one for like a price that they think you know is is correct for those. Because if you look up a core guitar, <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're oh, you're right. Like, yeah. So what what makes you think that a core ukulele is going to be like at the range that you think you know, it's mm-hmm. it's going to be, you know, or a, as cheap as you know you assume it's going to be? If you get any core instrument, you know, like yeah, uh, core if you guitar, buy a core box, anything, a core box exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like an entire like handmade handcrafted uh-huh. Hawaii core ukulele, if you're thinking that's gonna cost you like a hundred two hundred dollars you'd be very wrong you know because yeah. it yeah a cool box this big or even just this big as like as the body as big as the body that's oh, like yeah. right that's yeah. super expensive and then you 
you know you uh you add on what kind of like that uh like instrument grade kind of you know kind of wood because those those uh those boxes and the coal boxes you can just use whatever what is a, as long as the grain looks good but mm-hmm. these are like uh, it has to be like quarter sawn and very instrument grade type yeah type yeah of that, of it's even yeah. yeah if you want a good instrument <laughs> yeah. i'm sure there's some <laughs> makers that might not that's that's, that's what i tell people that. it's like you know well go look for a cheap coal guitar you know if you think like that you're like, I want a koa ukulele. Like, why is it that much? It's like, look at how much, you know, koa anything is. Yeah. 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 For yeah. um, Some... what one of the kind of famous koa sellers of things mm-hmm. in Hawaii is <laughs> yeah. Martin and Mar- MacArthur. Mm-hmm. Martin and MacArthur. Yeah. And so if you go to one of their showrooms, they'll have all kinds of things yeah. made out of koa. And um, not cheap. And you, yeah, yeah not cheap. be prepared to pay uh, <laughs> thousands. Pretty penny yeah. for yeah. Like oh man, like imagine like a like there's like coal benches, you know, like in some yeah. areas and stuff. Yeah, and it's like man, or that's, tables or yeah. like um, jeez, kinda, some, yeah, that's in the grands, you know. Some people too, they they or they used to come into uh, the shop that I worked at, yeah, and they'd be like, but so, like they're selling coal over there, and it's only yeah. it's so much. And I was like, oh, it's like scrap I scrap coal, <laughs> or like I don't think that's real coal either. Oh, I yeah, think that's yeah. they acacia, acacia, right? Yeah. And then they'll call, say, oh, it's coal, but it's yeah. like you know, it's yeah. from the same family, but it's not the yeah. same thing. I'll just just tell them if you know if if we're going down that road, well, you can have this kala like a kala acacia for mm-hmm. one hundred fifty bucks or two hundred mm-hmm. bucks. Mm-hmm. If that's you know if if for you that like acacia is okay, then. That's yeah, good. they, they yeah. made that ukulele. So yeah. for people yeah, who don't made. know, um, acacia is the same family of tree as koa, cool. but um, acacia is pretty much anything it, like that type of tree mm-hmm. grown anywhere else other than Hawaii. Hawaii. But I mean, you really, can only call it koa if it's growing in this state. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. And, call it and sort of like the soil content yeah. of Hawaii kind of makes koa trees mm-hmm. what they are mm-hmm. too, and yeah. then the. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So there, I mean, yeah, yeah I don't. I, don't, uh, <laughs> I can't plant stuff. So my, I have, I do have a question. Sorry, Kai. No. But if you took seeds, like core seeds, I don't think you can because they have like uh, all those screenings at like at the airport and stuff, you know? Like, yeah. But if you took core seeds and you planted them somewhere, like mm-hmm. you can't call it core. But no. It's still, and it wouldn't even be the same characters because it wouldn't grow the same. Yeah. Year, right. Yeah. So it would be yeah. a completely different. It would be in a point. different climate and a different, mm-hmm. you know, so different still soil. Be acacia, but. Yeah, it's the yeah, acacia. It's, it's, yeah, because I, I guess don't, I don't know how to yeah. grow things like. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I mean, like if you, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm sure like some of it is like a bias, you know, like just mm-hmm. whatever. But I feel like if you play a acacia ukulele and you play a ko ukulele, yeah. there is like a difference. There is like a noticeable difference, mm-hmm. and not just from you know the build quality or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like the wood itself makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean. Okay, it, honesty time like might be controversial for some you know for some people but i don't think koa is the best like uh the best sounding wood it's a for, yeah for well it's it's, you know, it's it's not. the wood that they had mm. uh when they started making ukuleles yeah. so yeah, it's just abundant it's the classic mm-hmm. you know that's mm-hmm. what right, you right. think of when you mm-hmm. think of an ukulele i think didn't didn't they also say like <laughs> that they like you know when you when they used to surf and stuff like yeah. They would just cut down koa trees, like <laughs> yeah. not realizing, like, oh, this thing is gonna be endangered. And yeah, and I mean, something. even I mean, the the Hawaiians would have like entire canoes, yeah, built out built of, out of a single gigantic tree, tree, yeah, design. a single trunk of mm-hmm. a tree mm-hmm. as part of the, like the hull of a canoe. Yeah, yeah, and now we can barely get like you know like pieces, <laughs> <Some> small pieces. <laughs> no, well, well, we we still do um. Yeah do like they still race koa canoes mm-hmm. in hawaii but they're all made out of tiny pieces of koa that Put that have together. been patched mm-hmm. together yeah and and so even to fix a koa canoe you have to like take a small piece of koa patch it yeah. in nah just cut another one down uh, yeah. fiberglass <laughs> yeah. like, cut another one down really yeah build another one yeah. <laughs> so, <We're abundant. laughs> so jim is saying like yeah. uh we have se asian imports that are in breach of uh old, like australia consumer protection mm-hmm. uh, claiming to be cool but are uh like, S- southeast asian yeah, yeah. Acacia. Acacia. Like, and acacia. i've all i've also heard too like you know some people are 
there there's you know some companies that will be like oh it's made out of coal and like the mm-hmm. top is coal yeah. but then the backs and sides are acacia right to keep mm-hmm. the cost mm-hmm. down and that's yeah. how they they get the technicality of like it's a coal made out of coal yeah. Yeah. it is yeah or like yeah. coal veneer you yeah know, and like so mm-hmm. uh like most of the the you know kamaka kanilea right. koaloha mm-hmm. like those companies you can kind of trust that they are made out of mm-hmm. like Hawaiian Koa, mm-hmm. but then some of the other companies you might just want to be a little bit more like Very, cautious yeah. and look into it. Yeah, Renee, Renee yeah. in the chat is asking, are there Koa tree farms? Yeah, and um, it, like yes, yes, there are, mm-hmm. and actually Koa is still kind of abundant. Yeah. It's just that you can't. Uh, I mean, only certain amounts of them are yeah. sanctioned for cutting down. And like, like uh, instruments like ukuleles and stuff are are uh, made with fallen koa trees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it takes, uh, like a koa tree takes a long time to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. to get to the size where you could make anything out of it. So so like with Kanilea, they're, they're trying... The trying yeah, they're doing this reforestation yeah. thing. But even they realize that the mm-hmm. trees that they're planting today mm-hmm. aren't going to be harvestable for another like 100, 100 200 years. Yeah. So it's not even for our lifetimes yeah, that they're planting. I think their goal is just to be carbon neutral because they're taking... So yeah, they be able yeah to, so like, they, like, they want to give back. back yeah. Because like, I've, I've planted a bunch of trees over there at Kanilea's uh, ranch and stuff and... Um, I, my daughter actually has one, like, cause uh, you can plant one and you get like a geo location. Oh, uh, and oh that's cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, for when she was born, like, she was gifted one from like the the Susas and stuff. I'm like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. But anyway, I I, I planted a bunch of the one I, I, I went up there for the first time. I hope Elle grows up and then it's like you take her to the farm and it's like, look, this is your tree. She's like, whatever, dad. I want to go back inside. <laughs> whatever, dad. I want to go back inside and play Fortnite now. I mean, by the time like she gets to be even like 18, 20 years old and stuff, it's not going to be that big of a tree. It's like still yeah, whatever. I mean, it's not going to be like a tiny whatever. It's going to be like a like any, I, you know, the, only like one of yeah. the trees outside like that. That side, not like a gigantic cool tree like used for ukuleles already mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. i i think too the com- the misconception too is like people come to hawaii and if they come to Kauai, right they see like our our island is like pretty green you yeah. know we have like a lot of trees and yeah. a lot of stuff they're like there's trees all over it's like <laughs> yeah, <those> yeah, down. <laughs> yeah but those aren't cool <laughs> like yeah, those, yeah, no. those are just whatever random trees you know it's like if you go to koke you're probably you it's you're not gonna see koa trees all around mm. Koke either, right? So yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of Kanilea, it's um it's it's time to choose our winner for uh for the songwriting challenge, and uh, one of the prizes is the Ola Kaina CD. So the Ola Kaina CD is uh benefiting oh <laughs> benefiting the reforestation project that Kanilea has going on. So um I have three of these but if you guys want to buy a uh, copy so if you don't win you know one of these and you guys want to buy a copy go to the uh, Kanilea Ukulele website and you can purchase one of these and uh, I think proceeds go to uh, or some of the proceeds go to the reforestation project so it's pretty cool um so do we have a wheel of the oh we have, we yeah. have a bunch of people today so here's the wheel yeah, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh there it is yeah here's the wheel so we have Kavai we have Daniel we have Alan we have Kelly we have S Dad Piper. I was like S- S- <laughs> SD. S S D. Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at it upside down. Uh, I see so Jonathan. And I see Jonathan. Yeah. So we have six people who uh, you know who wrote songs and what you know what are we talking about right now? So what we had was a songwriting challenge. So this board right here shows our guidelines. You had to have written a song that has the G chord and the D chord. Uh, G chord and the D chord in it. All right. And uh, bonus if you have chord inversions, lyrics, reggae, or if it's in three, four, or six, eight. So uh, you had to write a song, submit it in the uh, in the UU Plus forums. There's a thread for the uh, Thursday Live Lesson Songwriting Challenge. And um, as long as you wrote one, you get to be put in this uh, in this awesome little wheel. And whatever that wheel lands on, we're going to be picking winners off of that. We'll pick two winners today. So uh, one winner will get uh, the Macadamia Brittle Coffee. We'll get an Ola Kaina CD and a pack.
pack of AG cross AQ strings. So we are packing it up this time because there's a lot of people. We're proud of you folks. Thank you so much for doing so. If you guys uh, didn't participate this time, we're uh, you know we're gonna do a bunch. We'll do another one today. We'll uh, we'll uh, set do, the rules. Set the rules for you know for the next one today. And we usually give two or three weeks for you guys to you know to uh, to write a song. Okay, so Macadamia Brittle Coffee. AG cross AQ strings this is between myself and uh, Oculus strings. We collaborated together to make these. And Ola Kaina. We're going to be giving two of these prize packs. Um, you know, all, all three of those. We're going to be giving it to two lucky people. So, first one, spin that wheel, Kahai. Ooh. Kelly. Oh, it's red on the line. <laughs> Kelly. All right, so Kelly gets one. And um, one more. So here's the other one to prove that we have two. They're like, oh, no, send me Kelly's one. <laughs> so here's, a, you know, here's another one. Bam, bam, bam. So we have two of these. Spin that wheel, Kahai. Oh, you got one anyway. So, oh, okay. yeah, there you go. So, SD Bagpiper and Kelly, congratulations. Yay. Thank yeah. you so much, everyone, for, you know, for writing the song. Um, you know what? I have another CD here. So, let's pick a third person, and that person will just get just a CD. Mm -hmm. So, I brought three CDs today. So, go ahead. We'll get three prizes. I'm proud of everybody. Oh, you can't win two again. CDs. Oh, <laughs> 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 that? <laughs> respin, respin. Time. We don't normally respin. Uh, Daniel, all right, Daniel. this is going to Japan. So Ola Kaina goes to Daniel. And uh, the other prize packs we will be giving to Kelly and SD Bag Piper. So yeah, congratulations. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I have uh, have some more CDs at home and stuff. So we'll uh, we'll give that as another prize for, for the next one. And I'll sweeten the pot uh, with, with other stuff. So you never know. You never know. I have a signed card by Kahai. <laughs> <laughs> The chat is a little slow, or like it's oh. you know like our, our stream is a little slow getting out to people. Okay, so it's a delay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's funny because like Kelly won, yeah, and then Daniel is like, "Congrats for winning!" <laughs> and I, I think he didn't like he wrote it when before oh, he, yeah, he saw before he that. realized that he also won. Yeah, so he, right now he just said. Oh yeah, woohoo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he just got it. Yeah. All right, so nice. once again, if you, you know, if you guys do want a copy of this album and stuff, you want to help uh, with the reforestation project that Kanilea has, um yeah, you can pick it up at the on the Kanilea website. And actually the uh, the 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 photo, the 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 cover was was photographed by none other than uh Ukulele superstar Craig Chi. Craig is Chi. <laughs> I was gonna say, or as he likes to be known as Craigers. <laughs> Craigers Chi did the uh, you know did the album cover, so only so, his close friends can call him. <laughs> only his close friends know that because I don't think his name's not not in here for the uh, for the front cover. But yeah, that is Craig's picture. So it's a little Easter egg for you folks right there. Hmm. And uh, let's let's name the stuff. Um, uh, there is a Cody Puyo uh, Pata. So you know Cody. Um, most famous for uh, for doing the song Hole. So we taught Hole here. I, I think it's Hole. Yeah, I think Hole. Yep. So we uh, we we taught Hole here. So that's the guy you know who's who's famous for uh, for doing that song. Capena is you know is uh, is on the CD. Capena, uh, if you grew up in you know in um, in in Hawaii in the nineties or even just like last year or whatever, you will know the name Capena. Very 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 famous. Um, we got Jonah Kahanuola. Solatorio of Kiaoho. So Kiaoho is a uh, is is a, is a group from here uh, in in Hawaii and stuff. They're awesome as well. Play lots of awesome Hawaiian music. Ben Vegas and Myla Gibson. Myla Gibson, Kauai native, you know, one of ours. And uh, Ben Vegas, awesome, awesome guitar player, awesome singer, just just great. Um, Cody once again, you know, uh, did another uh, did another track on this. Carly G. So you know, you you guys know Carly G. She did um, Valerie with us, and she's awesome. So make sure you check her out. Um, she did Havana, which actually got viewed by um, who sang that song? Camila um, Camila Cabello. Yeah, Camila Cabello had a video of her watching like Carly's uh, Carly's video. is really cool. So <laughs> make sure you check that out. Um, uh, Kalehua, uh, Craig Chi, and Sarah Mizell is in, you know, is in this. Uh, Nainoa Gibson, gives uh, give the Gibson cake. You know, Nainoa's like uh, little kids and stuff. And uh, Kahiao Souza, so that's uh, that's Joe's son. <laughs> he's he's on this. Willie K, so Willie K is on this. 
and uh, Aldrin Guerrero, whoever that is, is on there. Kenneth Makuakane is mm-hmm. is on is is on this. Kenneth is a uh, is a Nahoku Hano Hano Award winner. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he's won. <laughs> I'm sure he's won those. Right? Like he <laughs> seems like something that he would win. Uh, Derek Sebastian Joe Souza is is also in this. Um, Sam Langi um, of uh, of Vaihi. So if you guys know Vaihi, and also Lena Langi. If you guys ever um, emailed Kanele at all, like Lena should uh, should have been the one to kind of correspond. And that's you know you guys should know her. Um, and that's it. So that's awesome. All these you know all these tracks. You should get get them and uh, support some reforestation project by Kanele. Okay. And uh, this actually is nominated for a Nahoku Hano Hano Award. A bunch of these tracks are nominated, and I think the CD itself is nominated for a Nahoku Hano Hano Award, which is a Hawaiian Grammy, including yours truly. I am nominated for mm-hmm. Instrumental of the Year this year, which I'm already practicing my my um, uh, Taimani Gardner deserves it, like clap, you know, because <laughs> she's also in that category, and I'm pretty sure she's going to win. I've already practiced my, yeah. Taimani, just what if, hands down, so good. What if you win and you're just clapping? It looks like you're clapping <laughs> yeah, for yourself. I got used to like, you're not clapping. No, I'm not gonna win. I mean, that's that's like, sure. That's you're just clapping for himself. <laughs> okay. We we got a couple of questions sure, sure, sure. Uh, before we move on to the next yeah. challenge. Yeah. Um, Renee asked, uh, "Is that ukulele there, Koa?" This right here. Uh, I, that? I think so. I think yeah, uh, both. Oh, of the, both. both of these are, are Koa. So that's Koa. This is also Koa. Um. This is a little bit more straight grain. There is some curls and stuff, but I like straight grain when it comes to uh, satin or silk. There's a silk finish ukulele. So silk finish ukulele, satin finish ukulele. I like a little bit more of a straight grain because you're not going to put gloss in it. So it's not really going to highlight the curls anyway. So um, although this is considered curly koa because there, you know, there are some curls in there. I uh, I focus more on the uh, on the on the green of it and the straight green of, uh, of of this particular instrument. That one straight up curly core. That's like master grade curls in, in mm-hmm. that one. So and that's... the one that I use on stage also master grade curls core. So uh, and curly curl uh, mm-hmm. it usually costs a little bit more. Like, yeah. So yeah. just like the higher the grade, the more yeah. it costs. So that's kind if of you guys a lot ever more. <laughs> wanted, yeah, a lot more. Wanted to buy like a Kanye <laughs> ukulele, like that's the difference between K one, K two, K three, like that kind of. You know, I... That so that ukulele is mm-hmm. kind of like a K one, right? Like yeah, I'm more of a K two. That... So it's a little bit of curl, but it's not like as much as say that would be master because it's K one, K two, K three, then like like master series or like cus- yeah, yeah. custom at that point, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, another question, uh, Mazimo asked, uh, "How is the Raposa next on their new tenors?" But I don't know. Did mm. uh, I don't think we've really tried. I I have. Because <laughs> I, mean, uh, I go to the um, to the music store down the road and stuff, and you know I uh, I, I I try out all their ukuleles all the time. I like to keep my fingers in the pulse, especially like, you know local ukuleles and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, they're they're okay. <laughs> they're, they're, I don't want to. They like, look very nice. Yeah, they look nice. <laughs> the show pieces. They look very very nice. <laughs> next. <laughs> next, next, uh, uh, next. Renee next was asking what size uke is the easiest to start high school kids on. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them asked high me school. which one is the easiest to play, and I said concert, concert because of yeah. the size. Yeah. But um, just asking. Yeah, you would, you would be correct. Um, a lot of the uh, you know a lot of the things that the concert has makes sense for you know for people who are starting out. Just even if it's not like a high school kids, even if it's like. Uh, um, someone who's older or, or whatever, just the I would start with concert. Yeah, yeah. It kind of, I mean, it makes sense because it's like the middle, right? Mm-hmm. But it has the best of like both worlds yeah. with like mm-hmm. portability yeah. and then also like playability, where it has like the frets. Enough frets. Yeah, it has all the frets. It's a big enough sound because uh, sometimes a soprano, some people might think like, oh, this is kind of like dinky sounding. Yeah. Even though if you have like a kamaka, like a soprano kamaka, it's still gonna not maybe dinky is not the right word, but like it's not as big. You know, the sound's not mm-hmm. as big. Uh, and if you upgrade to to the next size up, would be which would be a concert, it's kind of closer to that kind of bigger sound that we get with our tenors. So um, definitely concert. I love concert because I started out on a concert kamaku ukulele. Well, I guess uh, that was like really first... soprano. But well, my first real ukulele yeah, was a really concert, really kamaku serious ukulele. ukulele. I should yeah. bring that. I should do another show and tell. Like and should bring that ukulele on my concert. And I actually want to bring my daughter's uke because I have an eye uke for my daughter. Which is like this tiny, mm-hmm. and it's it's really. I've been playing that a lot, and uh, 
because uh because we have two so she has her own and and i i have one just just kind of tinker around and it's like it's a spruce toss that's actually kind of nice like it's uh it sounds really good and it's very 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 bright um i should i should show that off i should bring it next week i'll bring it next week sounds good yeah uh and then renee just asked uh what causes the curls for Oh, cool, uh, um, cool, it's, cool. it's the movement in the uh, you know it's the movement in, in the tree. So usually, koa is uh, is grown in higher elevations. So in higher elevations, you get like much more like wind and all kinds of like weather. You know, uh, differences if it's kind of lower in the ground. So all that kind of movement from the you know from the tree, no matter how little, is gonna cause those curls. Like yeah. The, uh, so it's usually um, cuts from kind of the base of the branches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of where you would get yeah. most of the movement, not not more of the like long mm-hmm. straight mm-hmm. sections. That would be like more straight green, I yeah. think. But right at the base between, like kind of where where the branch forks off, mm-hmm. that's where you're gonna get a lot of the, the curls. curls. Yeah. So it's from uh, from the weather, and from from wind and stuff like that. That's kind of the characteristic. So, you know, a uh, curl. Is is highly <laughs> sought after because that means that that you know uh, that particular tree was grown pretty high, you know? <laughs> and, and the higher like the less kind of um, real estate that you know for for higher trees. And m- curly is mostly cosmetic, like yeah. it's just like yeah, yeah straight gray actually and sounds then, better. And then Jim just yeah. posted like a uh, a link to something that totally um, contradicts what we just said so, <laughs> yeah so Straight you can read up on that yeah, too yeah, yeah. <laughs> jim likes to do that yeah. jim likes to tell us how long we are so thank you jim. Yeah. appreciate that yeah. okay uh <laughs> so straight gray actually sounds you know sounds better yeah. yeah so if you guys uh are looking for sound that's why i, I said with the uh, with the silk you know with the silk finish i i usually go for the straight green because you, you know we're not glossing enough to kind of show off the curls and stuff the straight green is a uh, is going to be what's what you want if you're not looking for gloss. Yep. Uh, we'll do the. Oh yeah, uh, we'll do the challenge. Yep. So here we go. Um, do you guys have any uh, suggestions? Uh, well, let's take some suggestions from the you know from the audience. Which which chords or what key would you guys like to play in this time? Should we make it uh, a little bit harder this time? Because yeah, the last two we made pretty easy, right? Okay, yeah, let's make it a little bit harder. We have three chords instead of two chords. Ah, uh, th- too hard. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I know we're uh, you know we have a little bit of delay, so we'll. we'll uh... Should for the bonus? Yes. Uh, the last two weeks we made like a uh, genre a bonus. Mm-hmm. Should we make a, a another genre? Uh, yeah, we didn't have. Bonus? Oh, that's right. We had reggae for this one. We'll, we'll do a different genre. We'll do. What's what would you like, guy? Because uh, you know, what kind of genre would you like as a bonus? Because mm. I picked reggae. Chill hop. World music, <laughs> world, world, traditional world music. If it, uh, it does not jump in it. <laughs> disqualified, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. disqualified. Yeah, disqualified. Did you redo? <laughs> um, <laughs> boo bands. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, we what we did the 50s, 60s, yeah, like the yeah, previous we did 50s. Mm-hmm. Reggae. What what would be like an easy kind of one to do or um, pretty like. A genre that everybody should kind of know and I, kind of. I want to do like a what would be considered a cowboy song. Let's do three chords, which would be one, four, five, and then let's do not necessarily. Would you say it's country? Like, would you say that that would be country? Mm. Like kind of cowboy style, you know, like that one, four, five kind of. Uh, well, I don't genre know. Genre would that be? What'd you call that? You're the genre master, Aaron. <laughs> I don't know. You could call it anything, really, yeah. but. Cause uh, let's see, cause I, I would I would like like you know, uh, to kinda what, hear what some kind of songs from people in that kind of genre. What kind of song do you think of like when you're trying to when you think of cowboy songs? Um, John Williams, <laughs> 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 like Home on the Range. Home, home on the range, uh-huh. the deer and the antelope play. The sound of his heart, but do do boop do do. Yeah, yeah. One for like, five. What would that be? Because that's not necessarily uh, like 
country. Would you say that that's country? I guess that's country, but not really. You like, could the country that I think of. No, not my country. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If it's yeah. not Brad Paisley, I don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, is that is that like a country singer? I, I just <laughs> is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a country too much. So I just pulled out a name from memory. <laughs> I think that's a guy. Okay. Um, let's do. What would that be? I don't know what. I, I I'm failing so traditional hard. Americana. <laughs> traditional Americana. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You uh, could just put country. Just country. Let's put country. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, what if you put cowboy and then. Country or cowboy music. Yeah. Let's do. Yeah, let's cover our bases. <laughs> cowboy music and country are two different things, just in case they're different for some people, you know? Uh, let's see what else. Well, what, what would you get? Uh, people are, are so people were sending in genres, and I just asked about keys and chords. Okay, well, we could add more genres. They don't, you know, we don't have to necessarily stick to one genre. Okay. So what other genres can uh, do they have? Uh, Renee said disco. Disco. Uh, Alan said American folk, but I don't know if he was meant. Like, I think yeah, I think yeah. that's American Calling, folk. Yeah. Would be cowboy music. So let's let's put slash and folk. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Alan earlier said like slack key, but yeah. that's just basically that's just only Alan. him. Yeah, yeah. You can <laughs> let's put it. Let's put it in there. Just for Alan. <laughs> so I can get the bonus points. <laughs> slack key. And what did they say what key they want to play it? Uh no, not really. So are we limiting it to three chords? Like you yeah, yeah. can't do it. Oh, okay, that's a challenge. I yeah. think that's yeah. You can't have more than those three, the, the, you can only have those three. Can only have, there. yeah. You can have less. Can you have less? Uh, well, you can have yeah, more. Yeah, You can have less. Okay, I guess that's so. a great one. That's a great one. So you could have two or three chords. Yeah, I don't or think... one chord. You know, <laughs> one one yeah, chord song. One chord song. <laughs> so Alan said, "That is a challenge." G, G? D, D. No, that's what, that was last last time, right? Because D and G. And S. Oh, okay. you can either B and G oh, or yeah. A and D. So maybe not D. Uh, we did F, I think, for the uh, 50s one. Mm-hmm. Let's do A. Let's do A. Okay. A, D, E, or E7. You can... A, D, E. You can use the sevenths, you know, of, of this. So we'll allow it. We'll allow it. We'll allow the sevenths. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, from A to D, you might want to use an A7. You can add that in there. It's not technically a new chord, but mm-hmm. it is. You know, so A, D, E. Is uh is the three chords that you guys jo- will be in, uh, huh? Jonathan said as like a bonus, mm-hmm. how about using inversions too? Ooh, okay, you can add that in there. Oh, and then uh, our, our regular bonus right is lyrics. Lyrics. And about dance, if you can come up with a dance for your song, we'll just give you the CD. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, I will uh, stick to that. Okay. If you guys send me a video of uh, you know of you guys playing your original song and somebody dancing it and stuff, heck, I'll give you a, I'll give you a copy of Bendito Tyler, which is not in print anymore. <laughs> so I'll give you a out of print a line Bendito dance. Tyler <laughs> CD if you can create a dance for that. And an old kind of CD, you know what? I would because I want to see it so much. What else can I? What else can I? I, I would like to see somebody do it. Sweet in this pot. <laughs> Sweet in this pot. Okay, let me see. Um, you, you know what? I'll, through through the weeks, I'll sweeten it a little bit more. But for now, yeah. Out of print, Bandido Tyler CD. You know what? I'll do you one better. Out of print. I'm a dreamer CD, which is rarer than the uh, than the Bandido Tyler CDs. Okay, <laughs> I'll give you a. I'm a dreamer CD. <laughs> Ola Kaina. Uh, a signed headshot of Kahai. <laughs> no, I don't know. But uh, well, I'll, I'll see you in the pot through, through the uh, through the weeks. If if somebody does it for this challenge, I'll give them some like some out of print CDs. <laughs> yeah, some rare some rare albums. Okay, there you go. And I'll I'll put it in the bottom. It's super super special. Super bonus. Super bonus. <laughs> Super bonus. Super bonus. Dance. Make a make up a dance. D N C E. That people are. <laughs> <laughs> so dance. 
Kelly asks, oh. is it only those three chords or is it in any key? Uh, we're gonna we're chords. gonna keep we're it, gonna keep to, it those three to just yeah, those, three those three chords. chords. Uh, Jonathan, because I know some people might like have a hard time singing in that key. I understand her question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jonathan asks, when is it due? And uh, let's go for uh, three weeks from now. Yeah. So in two weeks, we'll show you. You guys are you know our our song and you have one week from that's usually how we do it right well <laughs> we show and then we give you guys another week so three weeks we'll try to do it in two weeks but uh yeah. sometimes we like let like last or the week before right yeah. we had kyle on yeah. and it was like a guest so yeah if that comes up then we might yeah. postpone it how about <laughs> what if i write a song for this and I make a dance. Would you feel me like doing the dance to, to my song, Kahai, so that every, we can post it on the U Plus forums? I I'm, I don't have to dance, so yeah, sure. Ah, <laughs> baby, who knows? Yeah, I might. So you know, to put my my uh, my money mm. where my mouth is, <laughs> I might make a dance to uh, to to something. That would just make it more fun. So we have A D E. Uh, you can do country music, you can do cowboy music, or am folk, American folk music. Disco, you can do slack key if you want, inversions, lyrics, and as a super bonus, dance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you have to but but really, dance yeah, so so A, D, and E are no, the That's the only, only requirement. Yeah. yeah. The only requirement is to have A, D, and E on it. Uh, you can have less than these three, but you, but you can't cannot have, have more. more. Yeah. yeah. That's the challenge right there. One, four, five. It's going to be a, just like a simple, you have to keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, if you is. so if you do it in the key of um t e uh -huh. f g a yeah. if you do it in, in d can you use d and a like yes yeah. two chords yeah, and yeah. Then... so you could be in the key of d or uh yeah or you can do it in the key of e and be e and a it would be one and four so yeah. it's actually not necessarily in the key of a oh you can yeah. do it in the key of a d or e yeah, because uh, but in those in, those cases, you're limited to two to chords, two chords only. Yeah. Or I mean, you can use the uh, if you're in the key of D, you can use the E as a major second instead of a minor second. Oh, know? so uh -huh. kind of so, yeah. So it's yeah. have fun. Have, they basically just have fun with yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like just uh, the the point is to see what you know what we can come up with, right? So mm -hmm. that's uh, experiment with those three chords. See what sounds good. Uh, write you know write a song to it. Um, you don't have to write lyrics or, or whatever. But just, all of those are just bonuses. Yeah. So yeah. like, if you just want to write a song with A yeah. and D, then yeah, we'll accept it. Yeah, I want to yeah. make a because you guys, you do you watch The Office, guy? Uh, I, know, I know Aaron does. Not I didn't watch a lot. <laughs> I saw some of it. He has a dance called the Scarn. I want to make like a Scarn kind of dance to a to to a song. Uh -huh. so now I want to write this too and make a dance to it. I'll make a. You jump to the right, you shake that hand, you jump to the left, you shake that hand. <laughs> That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh my so goodness. I'll uh, when when I'll you said <laughs> when you said dance, yeah. I thought about uh the last like ukulele challenge yeah. video where it's like that Japanese song that has that dance, oh, right? They, uh, the, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be the thumbnail mm. <laughs> for this for this video. Yeah. But uh um but then also that video that you sent me about the bears. <laughs> oh yeah, the kuma. Yeah. 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 So we'll we'll post a link to that video on the show. <laughs> Examples so of know, yeah, you guys know what, what we're talking about. Examples of dance. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, that's gonna be it for Thursday live lessons this week. Thank you so lessons. See, I'm adding like plural to stuff like Fergans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning to Thursday live lessons. This is Aldrin Guerrero. That's Aaron Nakamura. That's Kahai Fergan. Thank you folks so much. We'll see you folks next time. Uh, for those of you folks who are sign up for you plus thank you for watching this uh watching this live and watching the video thank you so much for all of you folks who downloaded the podcast and this is the podcast check out ukulele on the ground.com sign up for you plus aloha